powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. It's Election Day. I'm Nicole Killian on Capitol Hill with what's at stake, plus the president's closing argument to voters. And of course, Election Day is here. And in Montana, just like much, much of the other country, we are energized. Coming up, a live report from the Gallatin County Courthouse and a look at how much voter turnout is expected in Montana this Election Day. Good morning to you. Good, we are you, you, live down at the Gallatin County Courthouse. Chet Laban is having a little too much fun this morning. Chet, how's everything going? Yo, okay. Um, Mike's gonna go down with the, with the chain. Well, Chet, you're gonna cut the chain. On Chet is live down at the well, Gallatin County Courthouse. Well, that's right there. Courthouse. We're live at the uh, Gallatin County election uh, headquarters this morning. Uh, about to be busy in a half hour. The polls are going to open across the state. Those folks who did not vote absentee or early vote, you'll be able to make your way to the polls. They'll stay open until 8 o'clock tonight. You'll walk into a booth much like this one, cast your ballots, drop it into a box with an election official, and they get that I voted sticker. Uh, we're going to, uh, we've been here all morning uh, chatting with Charlotte Mills, Gallatin County election officer, about the busy time that it takes. She has dozens of people out making sure that you can go and cast your ballot. So today's the day. Make sure if you haven't voted or you haven't voted absentee, head to your polling place. And if you need to do that here in just a little bit, we'll pass along that information so you know how to find out where your polling place are. Meantime, we're live at the Gallatin County Courthouse. We're going to send it back to you in the studio. <laughs> Thank you, Chet. Now, Republicans and Democrats have made their final pitch to voters around the country. President Trump hit three states yesterday, hoping to push some GOP candidates over the top in some close races. And as CBS's Nicole Killian reports, the president is very much on voters' minds. Anywhere in the world. President Trump is hoping his campaign barnstorming gets his supporters to the polls today. Because in a sense, I am on the ticket. According to a CBS News YouGov tracker, more than 70% of voters say the president is a factor in their vote. The contrast in this election could not be more clear. Democrats produce mobs. That's what's happened. Republicans produce jobs. Traveling to Ohio, Indiana, and Missouri yesterday, President Trump rallied with Tomorrow. GOP candidates in tight Tomorrow. races. We're going to call Senator McCaskill fired. Mr. Trump won Missouri by 18 points in 2016. Josh Hawley is hoping the president's support helps him unseat Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill. It does make you question when Josh Hawley said, says, if I go to Washington, I won't owe anybody. Uh, pretty sure he'll owe somebody. Candidates around the country are saying this is the most important election of a lifetime, and voters seem to agree early voting numbers have far exceeded previous midterms. El Pasoans have turned out at three and a half times what they did in the last midterm election. If that trend continues tomorrow, we win. Texas Democrat Beto O'Rourke is hoping for a surprise victory over Republican Senator Ted Cruz. With the economy booming in Texas, who in their right mind would want to screw that up? Republicans are confident they'll maintain control of the Senate, but that same CBS News YouGov tracker gives the Democrats a slight edge to take back control of the House. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Control of 36 governor's offices in both chambers of Congress are up for grabs. Some races are expected to be too close to call by tomorrow night or by tonight. It could be days or weeks before the final tally is known. And of course, we'll keep you updated. And more than 300,000 Montanas have already cast their vote for today's election, but tens of thousands more will be voting before the, close, the polls close tonight. MTN's chief political reporter, Mike Dennison, gives us the lowdown on the last day voting and registration and the campaign final push. It's finally here, Election Day 2018, and election officials in Montana are expecting a much bigger than average turnout for a midterm election. The top races on the ticket are Montana's U.S. Senate race between Democratic incumbent John Tester, Republican Matt Rosendale, and Libertarian Rick Breckinridge, and the U.S. House race. In that one, Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte is facing Democratic challenger Kathleen Williams and Libertarian Eleanor Swanson. While we've already seen a record number of absentee votes cast, Thousands of Montanans will be voting the old-fashioned way on Tuesday, going to the polls, starting at 7 a.m. And there are still other ways you can cast your vote, even if you haven't registered yet. The time for requesting absentee ballots is passed. 
Yet, if you're among the 100,000 voters who requested an absentee ballot and haven't turned it in, you can still do that Tuesday, in person, at the polls or your local county election office until 8 p.m. You also can register to vote on Tuesday, but only at the county election office. They'll give you a ballot when you register and you can fill it out right there and turn it in. As long as you're in line at the election office door by 8 p.m., you'll be able to register and vote. In addition to the top races, voters also will decide four ballot measures, including big money battles over I-185, which extends Medicaid expansion and increases tobacco taxes, and I-186, which would impose new clean water regulations on new hard rock mines. And they'll choose a new Montana Supreme Court clerk and decide two public service commission seats, 125 state Senate and House contests, and scores of other local offices. Candidates made their final picks Monday, with top Democrats rallying in Missoula and Great Falls, and top Republicans joining Vice President Mike Pence in Kalispell. The message from all sides has been pretty clear for several weeks. Get out and vote. What are you going to do? Vote! What are you going to get three friends to do? Vote! We have plenty of close races, up and down the ballot and all across the state. No matter your political leanings, it's a good bet your vote can make a difference here or wherever your polling place is on Tuesday. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now, polling places open in just less than a half an hour at 7 a.m. They will stay open until 8 p.m. tonight. And as Mike Dennison says, get in line before 8 o'clock. You'll be registered to vote That's and it. be able to cast your ballot this evening. That's exactly right. Do the dang thing. Let's do it. Uh, looks like snow may be hampering at least some of the drives across the area. I wanted to share this uh, this look at our ICAM at the west entrance. It says hi there at the bottom. We've got some loyal viewers out oh. in West Yellowstone there. So uh, beautiful morning. Uh, if you're heading out to the polls, here's a look <laughs> at what you can expect. Looks like the uh, snow is going to continue through the uh, lunch hour and then let up as you get into the afternoon and evening. Temperatures not budging much right now. Temperature sitting at around 32 degrees. That freezing temperature could provide a little ice uh, for some of those overpasses in the area. Light snow expected off and on throughout the day. That's what we're dealing with this morning. We've got a couple of inches of fresh snow out there, about a half inch out toward West Yellowstone. That is fresh as well. We'll talk more about your complete forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt, and hello back to you in West Yellowstone. Now, police in Butte are releasing more information about an 11-year-old boy accused in a stabbing late Friday. The boy accused of the stabbing and wounding a relative who's an adult man in the back with a kitchen knife at about 11 o'clock in their home on Moulton Street. The victim was treated and released from St. James Healthcare. The child is being held in a juvenile detention center in Great Falls. It's just a, it's a sad case and we're working with the family and with the uh, county attorney's office and stuff to see what the appropriate charges will be. Now, the undersheriff added it's very unusual to have such a young child committing this type of violent act. And there are new details about Sunday's officer-involved shooting near downtown Billings, and that put both Billings hospitals into lockdown. Now, the search is still on for two men involved in the burglary and the shooting, and a third man remains hospitalized from injuries sustained in that shooting. Police Chief Rich St. John says police are waiting to obtain a search warrant to find out more about those three men. The incident unfolded at about 2.30 on Sunday afternoon when Billings police were alerted to a burglary in progress. Chief St. John said the home of the 1000 block of North 31st Street was under renovation. And no one was home at the time. Officer Brandon Lang, a four-year member of the police force, was stationed at the hospital corridor area and responded to the report of the burglary. He parked his car a block away and started to walk towards that area on foot. That's when three men got into a car and drove towards the officer in an alley. Lang fired his gun at the car multiple times. When the men started to run, the driver who was injured was caught, but the others escaped. You know, at this point, what it looks like is that you have a, an interrupted burglary and that you have the, uh, these individuals who are driving directly uh, at an officer uh, and he fires his gun to protect himself. Now, the driver who suffered facial injuries was taken to St. Vincent's Healthcare, where he remains. Meanwhile, police are still looking for the other two men involved. And we stay in the Magic City for our next story. The bells and whistles of their games are going off throughout many of Montana's casinos and in other states as well. In this week's Montana Maids, MTN's Joe Zandora goes behind the scenes of Grand Vision Gaming in Billings. So try to turn the jungle into the Vegas casino. 
trying to turn the jungle into the Vegas casino floor. Based in Billings, Montana, Grand Vision Gaming is doing just that and more through their games throughout casinos across multiple states. The bells, whistles, and sounds of their games are going off throughout not only Montana, but South Dakota, Louisiana, West Virginia, and Oklahoma. We are, we are competing with like global companies that have tens of thousands, thousands of employees. And here we are with 39 employees based out of Billings, Montana, and we're able to compete and beat them in most of our markets. It all starts with the math. The math dictates how the game will play. Are there free games? Are there multipliers? How frequently do you get into the bonus? All of that is dictated by the math. The math model is what runs the game. Okay, so I need to match up a theme that I think is going to be entertaining and attractive to the player that they can get right away. You know, if you sit down, you walk over here and go wildlands, elephants, cool. You know, looks like a safari. The math and the art then get combined and get passed on to the software team, where the coding marries the art and math, and so the game begins. This is all the different instruments I use this guy. So I'll usually just start out with a piano sketch um, and come up with some melodic lines and then kind of build from there. From the animations, the sound effects, the coding, and even building the games, everything about the games from start to finish are made in-house. We can react fairly quickly. We're a small company and we, we compete with a lot of large companies. So being able to be on site, everybody on site in the same building allows us to make changes, adjust, adjustments, decisions quickly. From animations, sound and music, coding and building, once everything is put through a vigorous testing cycle, third-party approvals and beta testing is approved, the game is finally released to be sold and distributed into the market. We want to produce games that are, you know, fun and exciting for the players, and that's, that's you know, our end game here. In Billings, Montana, Zoe Zandora, MTN News. Grand Vision Gaming says that they are going to continue to create games and hope to expand, and it's hoping to evaluate opportunities in numerous other states and jurisdictions as well. It is time for a quick break. Here's a little sneak peek on what's coming up on Montana This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. We're covering all of today's hard-fought midterm races. We have correspondents talking to voters across the country. We'll break down the issues driving the race and introduce you to some of the candidates who could make history. And millennials will soon be the largest and most diverse voting bloc in America. They tell us why they're more likely to vote this year than in the past. We'll see you with all that at 7.